from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Beat the Champ at the Rapids Bowling Center in Niagara Falls with Janelle Sabin and Hall of Fame bowler Sue Nowitzki. My name is Paul Peck. Week number three here as we start year number four, Sue. And there's one thing we've learned about the Rapids Bowling Center. The top three longest winning streaks have all played a role and been a part of what's gone on here. Yet here we go, come into our third week, and the best anybody could do is win two in a row. I know, we've thrown that all right up in the air, right? But that's how it is when lane conditions can actually be changed. I mean, the house is the same, but the lane conditions aren't always the same. And the people throwing the ball on them make it make them play differently too, and that's what we're seeing. Right, so Jeff Pullman is the latest guy to end a streak and try to start a new one. He'll be our returning bowler, and he'll face some pretty good challengers in Tom Kress, Chuck Jagosinski, and Chris Labiak. So we started with Mike Sarcone, and we're ending with Chuck Jagosinski. Yeah. Two very, very, very Two of our best. tough opponent, opponents, right? So. Right. It's going to be fun, going to be interesting. We'll see Jeff Bold great in his last match and see if he can continue that. Going to be another fun week here. Are you ready, Miss Hometown Girl? I'm ready for it. I mean, I love it here. This is a great energy. It's where it all began. So. Uh, all right, yes, it is. So let's see if we can continue to make some more history here. It's the BTC in the NF, so let's get rolling. So we get it started with Jeff Pullman taking on Tom Kress for the first match of week three here at the Rapids Bowling Center in Niagara Falls. Jeff Pullman coming off an impressive victory in the last week's show where he really bowled well and putting up a 244 to 217 victory over Rocket Rob Piccoli. So Jeff's got a little momentum going and um, you know, he'll be the first to admit that he struggled a little bit on this show, but now he seems to be finding his groove a little bit. We'll see if it happens here today. How about that for starting your groove off okay? Absolutely perfect. Just picked up where he left off. Played the lanes a little deeper than he did in, in the first in the first game, and uh, just in the exact right spot right now. Tom Kress is the opponent for this match, making his third appearance on the show. The 21-year-old from Cheektowaga has two wins and two losses. And here we go with Tom's first frame. And Very we are nice. off to a good start between these two guys. Very last, nice. last time we saw Tom, it was in October uh, at Island Lanes, where he uh, last bowled on Beat the Champ. And of course, if you remember, go back a little further to Classic Lanes earlier in 2018, we had the really cool match where he bowled his brother Ryan, brother versus brother. First time we've ever had that on the show. Right, and it seems like we've had a press every month since. Yeah. But it, they're a right-hander and a left-hander, and it's been one or the other since that first month. So it was Tom that beat his brother Ryan, but it was Ryan that was on the show the last time. Right. So, so yeah, we've had a pretty steady dose of the Crest brothers, and. Uh, it works out good for them. So Jeff Holman now knows, not that he didn't already know, but knows he's going to be in a challenge because he's now looking at Tom Crest putting up strikes in the first two frames. I know, it just has seemed that every person coming out, out of the gate has been able to post up quite a few strikes to open up the game. So no room to, uh, to be lazy in the beginning. Match and strike for strike. The 45-year-old from Clarence Center, full-time teacher at the Westminster Community Charter School is Jeff Pullman, and Jeff comes from one of the great bowling families in Western New York. The Pullmans are outstanding, particularly in that Clarence area, and as we talked about a little bit on last week's show, it was his brother Joe that was the first ever weekly winner when we started Beat the Champ back in January of 2016. Seems like yesterday. And uh, they also have their own uh, Sandy Flop, which we didn't need to see in the last match because Jeff won, which is um, the mom showing her emotion. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might be a little emotional over that particular yeah. role there. It kind of hooked a little bit too much to the left and left that 10 pin standing. There's our first look at Janelle Saban and the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. Yeah, that ball just absolutely took off on him. He hit a dry spot, and that ball just went left. Oh, big spare. A little close, but he does get the spare in the third frame for Jeff Pullman. We 
we have talked a little bit about, as you see the vitals on Tom Cress, full-time student, part-time works at Dairy Queen in the summer. Is that not the perfect bowling setup ever? Student full-time and then a summer job at Dairy Queen so you don't have any distractions during the rest of the year to be able to work on your bowling. You gotta enjoy those years. Absolutely. So it's been a challenge for a lot of the bowlers here that things that they thought may have worked early in the show aren't working so well now and even throughout the show itself. And we saw it with Jeff Pullman where that hit that dry spot and kind of spun on him a little bit. Yeah, and midway through games, people have had to make, our bowlers have had to make decisions as to whether they were gonna change balls, move lines, and you know, so it's, it's, it's made it kind of um, a mystery who's gonna actually figure it out. It, there was no advantage to the person coming in or the person being the champ. Well, Tom's got it figured out for the moment with strikes to open up the first four frames here. Jeff striking on his first two and a spare on the third. Let's see what he can do now, but he already knows he's in quite a battle here with the way Tom Cress is bowling. And we also know there's a little bit of a difference between 29 and 30, so uh, they've had their challenges out there trying to keep up with uh, the changing lane conditions. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. I guess someone that keeps the ball on going straighter and you're not crossing through the, sure. the pattern sure. too much would probably be the one to end up figuring it out, getting the most consistency right. out of it. All right, well, the guys aren't dealing with that today. Not and we today. don't think they're going to deal with that next month either. But what they are dealing with is a really good match between two guys bowling really well as they make the turn here into the sixth frame. Tom Cress with five strikes and a spare. Jeff Pullman, four strikes and a spare. Make it five strikes and a spare. You know, as high as these scores are, these bowlers have been thinking and adjusting and and moving and making subtle changes on these lanes that you can't even really necessarily see to the naked eye because these lanes have been evolving all along and yet the scores are still relatively high. Let's see what Jeff does here. Seventh frame in a tight match separated by only 10 pins. Wobble, wobble, Almost. and it won't go down. Yeah, this lane is definitely hooking quite a bit more for him. So originally, when he made that first move, he left a light swisher, and now that same shot's coming up high. So they're, they're changing quick. 227 overall average for Jeff Coleman. Good cheering section, as there always is whenever any of the Pullmans are bowling on our show. His wife, Amanda, his daughter, Alyssa, son, Brady, all here at Rapids Bowling Center. Cheering him on. Good spare pickup in the seventh frame. Tom Cress has his mom, his dad, his brother, his sister, and a bunch of other family and friends also here cheering him on. Bowls in a couple of leagues during the course of the week. Broadway at, on Friday nights, transit on Mondays. One of the young, up and coming, outstanding bowlers. He and his brother here in Western New York. Whoa. That started to drift a little bit to the left. Oh, no, and he just yanked it to the left. <laughs> okay. All right, <laughs> that no was drifting. That was a yank, his, not drifting. Huh? That was definitely from his swing. He definitely got that one going right in front of him. Very close to being a chop. All right, so these guys results-wise are pretty dead even so far. Five strikes and two spares for each of them, as you can see on the Castellone scoreboard. Yep. And it results in a one-pin advantage right now. One pin for Jeff Pullman. Great shot. Don't forget, qualifying is, I think, are we wrapped up with qualifying for next month? No, we've got a little bit going on, nope. including this weekend. Sunday the 20th. Next month's shows here at the Rapids Bowling Center in the top qualifier in the round of 24. We'll win a television valued at $500 from Dirt Cheap TV. Paul Titone from St. Catharines, Ontario, was our television winner.
for this month's series of shows. So once again, we're back here in Niagara Falls, extended stay here at the Rapids Bowling Center for next month. Eighth frame, Jeff Pullman. Strike. Great shot. He knows that too. That wasn't. He's got to keep that right lane up. That's his good lane. So you you don't want to miss on your good lane. Yeah, that's you know that's a, a little bit of part of the hidden strategy that we talk an awful lot about when the two lanes are reacting differently and you feel like there's one lane that's performing much better for you. You can't miss your on opportunities there. Gonna move a little bit deeper here on lane 29. You know, kind of like winning your home games and splitting your road games. Right. It's kind of the same thinking there, right? Absolutely. Wow. Another nice strike for Jeff Holm. Boy, he is bowling great right now. So what he did is he moved his feet deeper, but he kept his target the same. A lot of times you'll be moving everything in, everything in, but you can't really do that on this because you're going to hit too much oil and the ball's not going to read or it's going to, you know, it's going to come up light. So he's kept his target the same. He's moved his feet deeper and just opened it up a little bit more and it worked out for him. So what does moving the feet deeper, what did that do to the ball so that he threw? What he's doing is crossing through more head oil. So as you move your feet in, the oil in the front of the lane, you're moving away from the burnt out spots where you, your set down point and your ball's actually crossing a little bit more oil just to keep it online a little bit longer. Ninth frame spare for Tom Press. So he'll so a big double. try to finish strong here. Yep. That's all he can do now because uh, posting up that strike on 29 was a, was a, was a big strike for job. Boy, that pin went flying over there by the 10 and just did not take it out. And that was crucial. He needed that one. Yes, he did. So one more here in the 10th frame for Tom Kress. Counts very important here. He needs nine or better to force Jeff to spare. So this is one of those things where you definitely want to be, you never know what's gonna happen. We've seen everything happen here. Oh yeah. You want all the pins you can get. And all those pins are 10 with a late slider to come taking out, take out the 10 pin. So it's a 228 on the board for Tom Press. And now Jeff Pullman with a chance to win. Jeff needs a spare. Strike will put it away. Do we finally get someone winning two in a row for the first time since the first week? A strike will do that for Jeff Coleman. Oh no. Uh oh. need to say very much. I think the look on Jeff's face tells you the story. He has to make this. Not only does he did he leave him did he miss what he wanted to do, but he leaves himself an incredibly difficult, challenging spare in order to win the match. not be enough and that is a kick to the gut an absolute kick to the gut for Jeff Pullman who was on his way to a victory instead it winds up being a four pin defeat and it's Tom Crest that will move on to take on Chuck Jagasinski 228 224 the final uh, I don't even want to have to do it but we'll talk to Jeff about it and get you ready for match number two when Sue and I return to the falls right after this Oh, Jeff, you're bowling great. You were in a groove. That's as good as we've seen you bowl on this show in a long time. What the heck happened in the 10th frame? It's just, uh, it's just a matter of just not executing. 
you know, that one shot, Tom threw a really good game and put some pressure on me. And, uh, you know, I felt like I was throwing the ball good all day. And, you know, the lanes are just starting to transition now. So it's just minor adjustments every shot. And the last one got away from me. I know you love this sport. Your family yep. loves this sport. You don't probably love it very much when something like that happens. You're a no. spare away from a win. And then not only is it a miss, but it's an incredibly difficult leave for you. How hard is that? Well, I, I put myself in a position to go up and attempt to win the match. I, you know, I, and I had that opportunity and just uh, just didn't work out. All right, go drown some sorrows with that, will you? Thanks. All right, Jeff Pullman is uh, as much a hard luck bowler as we've ever had on this show, but he's a good bowler, and we know there's better times ahead. We got another match coming your way. Stick around. More Beat the Champ right after this. Well, maybe Tom Crest wasn't entirely sure he'd be bowling another match, but after what happened in that last frame from Jeff Pullman, Tom will more than happily take the chance to bowl again. And this time it's against Chuck Jagosinski. And here we go, match number two of the week here at the Rapids Bowling Center. And it's a first frame strike for one of our most successful beat the champ bowlers, Chuck Jagosinski. Well, I, as a bowler, not that Tom didn't bowl well. I mean, you know, he bowled at, you know, 228, nothing wrong with that. But is, is there a part where you're like, okay, it wasn't good enough, I'm going to lose this match, and then all of a sudden you have to re kind of re jolt yourself? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's important that we talk about getting as many pins as you possibly can and, you know, never giving up on your spares because you just absolutely do not know what's going to happen. And it, just because it looks like it's going one way, it, it just doesn't matter because it's not over until it's over. Yeah, no, and that's, uh, and again, that was a tribute to the way Tom finished strong in that match, but maybe thinking that he wasn't going to win necessarily, but because he finished strong, he put some pressure on Jeff, gave himself enough count to have Jeff mess up at the most inopportune of times and leave Tom as the winner. So um, good for Tom. He is bowling well, and he'll look to continue that. He'll have quite the challenge. and. Chuck Jagosinski, but that's two frames and two strikes. I think got a little Crest family uh, revenge to enact here because it was Chuck Jagosinski that beat his brother Ryan last month up at Brad Angelo Lane. So, you know, so if, he, if Tom needed any more incentive, he's got that. It's okay when he's doing it, it's not okay when somebody else does it, right? That's right. <laughs> Chuck Jagosinski in his 23rd appearance here on Beat the Champ, 21 wins and 13 losses. We saw him last month at Brad Angelo Lanes where he rattled off a three-match winning streak, including that victory over Tom's brother, Ryan. And as we talked about on the first match of the week, uh, of the month rather, with Mike Zarcone, if you're talking about the most successful guys in this now into its fourth year run of Beat the Champ, uh, if you're going to talk about Mike Zarcone, you have to talk about Chuck Jagosinski as well. Absolutely. Those two have stuck with it all along. I mean, we've had some people that were very strong in the beginning. Tony Dolan was around a lot in the beginning. Uh, Matt Zazowski was a lot That's in the right. beginning. But these guys for full three years and now into the fourth year of the show have been consistent about coming along and, and, and staying with it. Yeah, and, and again, it's, what it says about Mike and Chuck is they're great bowlers. We know that. They're just big fans of the show. Yeah. They make the effort to be a part of qualifying. Right. They want to be on the show every month. They want to make sure they're on TV. So they're fans of the show and fans of the format and fans of, of displaying for everyone how good they are. If not, if they didn't care about it, they wouldn't make the effort. And I think you need it because where would the a lot of the fun of the PBA was and the rivalries and, and you know PDW? Did you like them? Did you not like them? And that's what we've got here with with these guys. And we need the newcomers, but we need these people that you know they become your household Saturday four o'clock in the afternoon name. 51 years old from Lancaster, employed at the Attica Correctional Facility are the vital stats on Chuck Jagosinski on the bowling front. He's been bowling since he's about seven years old. 235 average, bowls five nights a week around Western New York. Numerous Bowler of the Year awards, tournament championships, uh, Hall of Fames, you name it, Chuck has got all of it. And right now he's getting all the pins because that's five frames and five strikes. 
One thing we know about Chuck is Chuck likes to get up and bowl. I mean, oh, that yeah. ball, he is standing to take it out of that ball return as soon as it comes up and his feet are in the second step. If he didn't have to, to deal with an opponent, it'd be like a 10 minute match. He bowled 10 <laughs> frames in 10 minutes. Yeah. In the meantime, Tom Cress is staying right there with Chuck. And that's the first time that Tom hasn't had a strike. And he'll have a couple of pins to pull down here in the fifth frame. Oh, yeah. It, uh, well, that, that, things that, move when Chuck Jagosinski's bowling. That, that pace can be unnerving to your opponent because as soon as, you know, you get a you get a tempo going in your head. And as soon as you're sitting down and it... Yep, and it starts to mess with you a little bit. It and does. Instead of grabbing the spare in the fifth frame, Tom will leave it open after only getting one pin. What happens is that pace starts to become, you know, we're in the fifth frame now, and now he's on that pace, and it's not a comfortable pace for him, and he's rushing his spare shot because he, you, you can't help it. You just start getting up and moving, too. What have you done in situations like that? You purposely try to slow things down? I don't, it, it, would be, it would depend whether I was aware of it. Okay. You know, because in this case, you and I sit here and we watch it, so we're aware of it. But Tom, because he doesn't bowl Chuck all the time, may not even be aware it's happening. And a late fall in the seven pin gets Chuck another strike. But what you want to do is you want to try to get the match back. You always want to try to keep the match in your own hands. So you go at your own pace, but you have to be aware. If you're not aware, you're going to get dragged right into this this. This, this fast pace. <laughs> this tornado of yeah, bowling yeah. that is Chuck Jagosinski. Seven frames, seven strikes. He's so fun when he's this intense though, yeah. I have to tell you. It's he 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 is he, I was gonna say he's even more intense than Zarcon is, and we know how intense oh, yeah. Mike is. Yeah. But but Mike's a little more laid back. Different and demeanors. Mike's just like I'm good. I know I'm good. You know I'm good. Here I am. Chuck is kind of in your face intense a little bit. Well, the big difference in their personalities is Mike can. I think Mike can get down. A couple things can happen and he can get down um, on himself. Chuck doesn't get down on himself. He really doesn't. There's, he'll find a reasoning for what's happening out there, but he won't get down on himself. Boy, that pin just seemed like it was going right for the 10 and sort of flew around the top of it. So it leaves Tom with an eight frame spare opportunity. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point that you're making. I think I think when something goes bad for Chuck, he gets more angry and more intense. This looks like a good time to take a break. We'll be back with more Beat the Champ right after this. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Yeah, his intensity gets he gets tougher. Don't forget we've got qualifying going on for next month's shows that are gonna be right here back again at the Rapids Bowling Center and the top qualifier in the round of 24 wins a television value to $500 from Dirt Free TV. And it's another strike. Eight frames, eight strikes for Chuck Jagosinski. It's gonna slow Chuck down. The pins haven't come down. <laughs> I said, he's waiting for the ball return and the pin setter is the only thing that slows it down. Maybe he could hire Rocket Rob Picoli, just whip the ball back at him. Save a, like three extra seconds. There's Janelle on the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard that shows Chuck perfect through the first eight frames. Frame number nine. And the four pin will end the attempt. <laughs> What I found. Trash talking Mike's are cold I there. Know, that's great. That's I love that it. All about it. He hasn't been here in three if, weeks. If you, couldn't, <laughs> he, if you couldn't hear him. He said, What am I, Mike Zarcone, eight in a row and then leaving an extra pin? Well, I was I didn't want to say it while he was up there, but that having to adjust that scoring actually slowed down his pace. Yeah. He, he doesn't like that. And he pulled the ball. The ball was very much was was left of his target. I mean he could have he could have stole it, but it was definitely left of his target. That pace is very important to him. Striking the ninth for Tom Press. 
Yeah, you're right. I, I didn't even realize it. I, I, part of me kind of said, why, why is Chuck taking so much time? I didn't realize there was a little scoring glitch that had to be taken right. care of, but maybe that's all it took. Maybe that's all it took for to, just to, to create just a little bit of a difference in the routine that right. had led to all those strikes. That blistering pace. So we once again will have a change in champion. Yes. Tom beat the champ. <laughs> yes, we will. Boy, you can't argue with the way Tom Cress has bowled both matches and you know, he, he's gonna lose this one and he probably should have lost the one before, but he's bowled great. And I think, uh, like we said, between he and his brother Ryan, uh, we've had a pretty steady stream of the Crest brothers on our show. And I think that's gonna continue as they are really outstanding young up and coming bowlers. But, uh, but you know, again, just running into a couple of really good performances, particularly this one from Chuck Jackson. Another strike to end it. Well, we'll get one more here for Tom. and It's hard uh, to believe he's going to shoot 240 and uh, not even have a pop. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, kind of the nature of this game. And again, if you know you're bowling up against the Chuck Jagosinski, you almost know you got to throw 260. Yeah. Probably, right? I mean, let's be honest. Chuck's that good. And, and I think there's always a little bit of that intimidation factor that comes with it, too. You're like, oh, who am I bowling? Oh, okay. And again, ending on four consecutive strikes for Press to put a 245 up that will not be good enough. So let's see what Chuck's gonna finish with here. He struck through the first eight frames, a spare in the ninth, and an early strike in the 10th. Well, I wonder how Chris Labiak feels coming into this match, because every single person that's come in has started off with a nice string of strikes. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> We've had a lot of that, as you can see on the Castellone scoreboard, it continued here, with, but with strikes for the first four frames for both guys. I think Chris Labiak is over there trying to figure out how can I untie my shoe? You know, how can I, uh, how can I adjust my, uh, my wrist uh, bands, you know? Uh, you know, can I, can I trim my nails in between frames the or whatever, you know? The secret is the, definitely slowing them down. Great so Chuck Jagosinski in Chuck Jagosinski style rips off a 279 to beat Tom Crest 279 to 245. The Jagosinski show rolls on here. One more match to come. Can Chuck figure out a way to win two in a row? Will Chris Labiak have something to say about that? We'll find out. We'll talk to Tom Crest about another great performance, and then we'll get you ready for match number three when we return to the falls right after this. Well, Tom, it's always tough when 245 isn't good enough to win, but I think you kind of know going into a match with Chuck Jagosinski, it might not be, right? Yeah, you got to throw a lot of strikes. Can't miss your spares, and I threw the ball a while, just made a couple bad shots, and Chuck bowled well. It's a good win. Yeah, let me ask you about the match before against Jeff Pullman. Such a dramatic ending yeah. to it. How how were you able to sort of keep your kind of head in the right place and then kind of refocus for another match? Yeah, I, I, I thought for sure that I was, was not going to win that match when I made some bad shots late, but I had lucky enough to win, and... Joe Bull great, um, Jeff Bull great. It was just a lucky, lucky win by me. Yeah, all right, well, congratulations. It's our fourth consecutive month where we've had either Tom or his brother Ryan on the show. We'll see if that continues next month again here at Rapids. Always good to have any members of the Crest family on the show. Thank you. All right, good performances by Tom Crest. It's Jagosinski versus Labiak. It's our next match, and it's coming up next. Well, next up for Chuck Jagosinski, it is Chris Labiak for our final match of the week here at the Rapids Bowling Center. And here we go. No surprise, right off the bat. Shake a hand, grab a ball, throw it down the lanes, get 10 picks. That's Chuck Jagosinski right there. 
<laughs> so now, you know, yeah, it's funny we talked about it, but I'm sure Chris is worried about his own game here. But, but you know, it, do you try to figure out a way to, to get him off his routine a little bit? See if, uh, if Chris is worried about any of that stuff at all. Seventh, six different appearance on the show for Chris Labiak. Six wins and three losses. We saw him last during the summer up at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. Chris had to win a roll-off. There was a tie for the final qualifying spot on the show between himself and Jason Shuby. So those two guys had to roll off to determine who would be the, on the show and who would be the alternate. And it was Chris that came up with the win in the roll-off, which put Jason Shuby to the I, alternate I spot. I didn't know that, but I did see Jason Shuby back there, and I was thinking, I was wondering what he was doing back there. Now I know he's the alternate. Chris, the first two-hander that we've had on this month's show. Let's see what he does with this difficult leave and unable to get them all. So it's an open in the first frame and in most circumstances, you wouldn't think that would hurt too much, but you are bowling against Chuck Jagosinski. Yeah, well, now's the time that you want to pull out. You might want to do what you can to neutralize them because right. you don't want to get too far behind. Chris, of course, as we mentioned, the two-hander, but he also bowls left and right. Um, but again, declaring that he's bowling righty for this match. Look at the revolutions on that ball. Yeah, well, I'll say the, the, the pattern on the ball is an incredible aid for all of us on TV and those of us here at the Rapids Bowling Center to see the revolutions. And I hope you can pick that up on TV, that you can just see how fast that thing is spinning. And that's absolutely created by the two hands. Let's see if you can't pick it up here. So it's open spare in the first two frames for Chris Labiak and Chris and Chuck Jagosinski after a strike in the first. We'll go right back to work. His wife Michelle, his son Noah are here, his mom Wanda's here, his buddy Fran Bax is here as well too. And how Fran, about yep. how about what Chuck and Fran did a couple of weeks ago at Wimbledon Lanes in West Seneca uh, in a league that they both bowl in? Both of them shot 300 for a 16.07 set. It was Chuck's 68, 300, and Fran's 69. And I'm sure that's all Fran talked about on the drive home. Was I've got one more 300? <laughs> well, we've got a couple years on him too, so that's that wouldn't be altogether fair, but. Um, Fred is also another fast-paced bowler, so you can understand why those two would complement each other because they can keep their paces up. Man, if those two guys bowled against each other on this show, we'd have to insert like a extra episode of Hogan's Heroes just to <laughs> fill the hour. And there's back to the Chris Levy act that we're used to seeing where He's in a groove and knocking all the pins down. First strike of the match for Chris. Right, and possibly down 31 pins in the second frame already, depending on whether Chuck keeps this up or not. He's pretty close to 30 pins down already. 34 years old from North Tonawanda, works in the healthcare industry, does Chris Labiak. A new, relative newcomer to bowling, only been bowling uh, for the last 13 years or so. But in that time, as he's developed a two-handed style due to a wrist injury when he first started, um, he's got a terrific 230 average. And, and he started to win a lot of titles just recently, set the house record at Kenmore Lanes in November with a 300-300-269-869 series. Wow. <clears throat> Wow. How about those? How about that for a series? Huh? Um, that's amazing. That's an incredible amount of striking. I mean, you know the lanes are changing. He's probably bowling five man, if not. Even even Allie Brandt goes wow when you yeah. tell him about that series, huh? Wow. So a couple strikes in a row now uh, for Chris. And the strikes continue for Chuck Jagosinski. Correction strike spare for Chris in the last two. And right to work goes Chuck in the fifth frame. Strike right there. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. And 
Chris just can't seem to find the groove here right now. And with the way that Chuck is knocking pins down, that's that's a pretty big hole to have to overcome. Well, it, as it stands, Chris still has a 257 left on the score sheet, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, I'm sorry, that's a lie. He's got a 227. Yeah, that up. sounded a little bit high to me, yeah. but I don't ever question your scoring no, no, no. acumen. So we're looking at 227 high if he were to strike out at this point. All right, 51 years old from Lancaster is Chuck Jagosinski. We've told you a little bit about his background, and his history, and you know, you name it. Uh, there isn't much that he hasn't accomplished in this sport in Western New York. And I think Chuck's got a little bit of a lock-in on here on trying to see if he can't pull off a 300 game here or at least go a little farther than his buddy Zarcone did earlier in the, in the month. Well, did you issue the, the challenge or no? I did not. I, I did not. I, 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 Chuck falls under that don't poke the bear category. <laughs> You're so right. Yeah. You're so right. It doesn't take much to, to, to get him a little worked up, and I'm going to be the last one that wants to do any no, of that. No, we'll let his opponents do that. We'll stay yes, out of it. You bet. There's the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard that shows Chuck Jagosinski perfect through seven. Don't forget, qualifying is going to go on. Uh, a little more, a couple more opportunities to qualify here at the Rapids Bowling Center for next month's show on the Sports Shot. Going to be a little different when we hit Rapids again. Uh, and the top qualifier in the round of 24 wins the television valued at $500 from Dirt Cheek TV. So check the Facebook page for the remaining opportunities for you to come out here and qualify. And that'll be an interesting thing for our champ, which is at this point, looks like it will be Chuck who might benefit from actually bowling in the uh, qualifier, even though he doesn't need to, because the shots can be very shot. different than right. coming on to it. It may not favor him. And as the champion coming in and the person that you want to beat, he may be at a bit of a disadvantage. Right, so just because Chuck has bowled so well here at the Rapids Bowling Center and advances back to here for the next series of shows, because the shot's so different, it may or may not carry over. And that, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. That It does probably benefit Chuck to get out here and bowl a little bit in the qualifier, so he's familiar with what the pattern is going to do. So, That'll be very interesting to see in our series of shows for next month, exactly who is here to challenge, or what looks like it's going to be Chuck as our advancing winner, uh, and how those guys handle that that right. lane pattern. Right, because it's going to be, the per he'll be facing the person who pulled the best on that condition that they'll right. be facing. That all, all that means is that first show is going to be fun to watch because it's going to be a great opening match between Chuck and whomever it was that mastered that oil pattern. Right. All right, eighth frame now as Chuck looks to stay perfect. And he gets it. A little bit of a slide over there, a little body English helps as well too. So Chuck's not even waiting for the ball to come nope. up. He's different using ball. a different ball on Doesn't each matter. lane. <laughs> Just hand me anything. Doesn't matter. Go get me a lane ball. I'll knock them all down. Perfect through nine I for Chuck. I can't even tell you, though, that, how unusual and unique it is what he's doing out here. And at, this, at the pace that he's doing it, it's pretty impressive. So this so, really comes down to Chris just wanting to get out of the way. Yeah, this is Chris Labiak will finish things out here. He, he knows he's not going to win. He doesn't want to get in the way of uh, what could be a pretty cool finale here to the show. To see whether Chuck's going to pull off his first beat the champ 300 game. As we mentioned, we have Barry's had four his, of them. His revenge, and he's going to yes. slow this down. And, We've uh, had four 300 games, none of them by Chuck, nor none of them by Mike Sarcone. So that's what's at stake for Chuck when he toes the line here in the 10th frame. Mike D'Amico, Paul Geiger, Jason Siliberto, and Brandon Stewart are the guys that have done it on this show before. None of them here either. Matter two, Jamestown, Allie Brant, and Classic. 10th frame for Chris Labiak. And as you pointed out, Mike Sarcone's name is not on that list either. 
still some things left to be done. Oh yeah. The competition between these two guys is pretty intense and pretty fierce and anybody that gives it that's a chance to one up one of the other uh, with something the other one hasn't done is uh, that's big. Slaviak finishes off the spare here. He'll have one more fill ball to wrap up the 10th frame and post his final score. And there you can see what we're facing in frame number 10 for Chuck Jagosinski. So not a whole lot that Chuck that Chris Labiak could do with the way Chuck Jagosinski is bowling, and certainly a 182 isn't likely going to ever be enough to beat Chuck. So here we go, 10th frame for Chuck Jagosinski as he looks for the 69th 300 game of his career. There's one. Dare I say that Fran is here, and that would tie Fran. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. Chuck, uh, you know, who just, just. And Fran's such a good sport, he's videotaping yeah. it right now. All right, here's the second one. Great shot. Man, those pins are just exploding upon the collision with the ball. So one more for a 300 game for Chuck oh, no. Jagosinski. Always fun oh, no. when we get a chance oh, to no. see these here oh, on the show. No. Uh-oh, we have a little delay there? Oh, no, I was just hoping that we break right. down. <laughs> chance for a 300 game for Chuck Jagosinski. for Chuck Jagosinski as he ties his buddy friend back. a so high five over there and a hug for his wife, Michelle, and just a cool moment. It always is when there's a 300 game on television, particularly when we have a chance to be a part of it. And like we said, Chuck has done so many cool, awesome things, not only in bowling in this town, but on this show. Pretty cool to see him check another one off the list. Absolutely, and I get to interview him now. Yeah, now we get to interview a happy, nice, pleasant Chuck Jagosinski. And guess what? going to come back for next month's shows as well too. We will come back and talk to the guys and talk to Chuck about a big performance here when Sue and I return to the Rapids Bowling Center in Niagara Falls. More Beat the Champ right after this. Well, it's always a cool moment to see a 300 game bowled on TV. Chris, I'm not so sure it's always cool for the opponent, but there has to be part of you that just admires how good a bowler Chuck is. Absolutely. He's coming fresh off the 279, so he's always been a great bowler. I've known him for a number of years. And uh, to do it against me, it doesn't matter because I gave it my best. I was, I was having some difficulties out there, but it's been a roller coaster of emotions for me. I've had some really good weeks, some really bad weeks. Our reaction wasn't the best today, but you live and you learn. And for him to shoot that, that's awesome. Yeah, all right. Well, there you go. That'll make you feel a little bit better. It's always good. Good to have you on the show as well. Pleasure to be here. All right, the happy Chuck Jagosinski, Sue. We love a happy Chuck. So that's what it takes to make you happy is averaging 289.5? Yes. Uh, anything over 280 <laughs> in more than one game, I'm happy. All right, so great game, great 300, great performance today. How does this play into next month when we're going to deal with a sports shot? I got to see. I don't know too, I, if it's a modify or a real sports shot. I, if it's a real sports shot, the scores will be like 200, 210, and you win. And if it's modified, it'll be a little higher. But but then I got next week after the taping, I got to go to Pennsylvania for that um, Billy Lane's team tournament. So hopefully I don't get seven or eight in a row. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're going to come and try out for next month then and get an idea of what the shot's like? Nope. <laughs> There you have it. There you go. <laughs> I get here early for practice. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, great bowling today. So you know, you got a little insight into the strategy. You know, it's a, Chuck's like, no, nah, whatever. I'll no just strategy. practice. I'll be fine. <laughs> Chuck, that is for you. Congratulations. A heck of a way to wrap up week number three here at the Rapids Bowling Center with some great bowling from Chuck Jagosinski. Sue and I are back to get you ready for our return trip to Niagara Falls for next month when we return to beat the champ.
Well, everything about Chuck Jagosinski is fun to watch. His bowling, his style, his pace, his personality, and I'll tell you what, those two matches were just works of art. Yep. Do you remember when you used to be nervous about having to interview him when yeah. he'd lose? Thank God he's winning, right? He's so oh, much yeah. easier to deal with when oh, he's winning. Oh, yes, he certainly is. And, and again, just great to see a 300 game. Always fun to see them. But now fun to see one of the best guys we've ever had on the show get his now. Um, it was Zarcone that had the 289 that came close a couple weeks ago, and Chuck's one up them for the moment. I know. We had so much uh, to talk about with those two coming into this new year with all they've accomplished. And 300s were not on either one of their accomplishments. Mike almost got there, but then Chuck did. Yeah, all right. So it's Chuck Jagosinski that will advance in two weeks to come right back here to the Rapids Bowling Center with a different oil pattern. We'll see how that carries over and a whole new group of bowlers to challenge him. If Chuck keeps bowling the way he's bowling, you're going to have the easiest job in town. Well, let's see if he can carry it on because we learned this month that you know, not everybody was winning more than one or two games, so let's see if he can keep that streak alive. Can a streak happen from Chuck Jagosinski? We'll find out. Next week's show, we're going to rerun our Open Hour Masters special, which was a great final match between Dana Vojtovic and Jack Jerk. And then in two weeks, we're right back here to the Rapids Bowling Center, so we'll see you then on Beat the Champ.